Welcome to Born Without Boundaries, all of you. So this is a special moon check-in. I am a moon child, moon baby Cancerian, double Cancer, Cancer Sun, Cancer Moon, Cancer Jupiter. So the moon has a very special place in my life, but it affects us all. And so this is your new moon in Sagittarius reading. All zodiac signs straight across the board. The timestamps will be in the description box. And I'll also pin it to one of the comments so that you can use it on your mobile phone or your laptop computer or desktop. We're going to go through each zodiac sign. I've pre-shuffled the cards. You can see them here. What I've asked for is two questions. One, which direction does each zodiac sign need to head in? And two, a message to help you understand why you need to head in that direction. Let me explain to you why direction is so important. It's a Sagittarius new moon. I'm going to read to you from um, mooncalendarastroseek.com. I've explained to you guys before, I am currently studying astrology, so I don't consider myself an expert, but I am an enthusiast and a student. So let me share with you what I've learned about the new moon in Sagittarius, reading once again from mooncalendar.astroseek.com. New moon in Sagittarius. <clears throat> the greatest need is always search for something. Sorry, let me say that again. The greatest need is to always search for something. In order to feel safe, you might find that you need to have a goal, mission, or philosophy that gives your life meaning. With Moon and Sagittarius, you have an optimistic approach to life, and you believe that things will get better even if you get into trouble. Does that mean you're going to get into trouble? No. It means we're focused. This new moon energy is helping us to focus on how much our goals mean to us. Not just for future success or making money, but for happiness inside of ourselves. That the human mind that is active and put to work. I think it was a quote by Ben Franklin that said that a human mind that's put to work is a happy mind. And so focusing on goals or having a mission or having things that you can work on that matter to you and you can see progress is happening or just the activity of mentally being able to wrap your mind around something that's important to you doesn't just help us get ahead in life. It helps us be healthy. It helps us establish our mental health, our spiritual health, our emotional health. And it's all connected to our physical health. To have that focus is to have daily medicine just through inspiration and usefulness, purpose, to have purpose. So what I've done is I've asked the cards per each zodiac sign, what is their purpose? Which direction should they be focused on going? around this new moon and into the new year. And then I've also asked why, let them know why. What's the reasoning behind it? What's the message they need to hear to understand the direction that they need to be taking? So let's move into this. And as we move into this, I will be sucking out a throat lozenge. So please, nobody, nobody complain please that I'm sucking on a throat, throat lozenge. You can't understand me. I have laryngitis, guys. I have to suck on a throat lozenge. It soothes my throat. Um, what is your direction? What do you have to focus on? Where do you want to be a month from now? Three months from now? Six months from now? Kisses! That's my puppy. A year from now, where do you want to be? What is your direction? What are your goals? What are your aspirations? Most importantly, what makes you happy when you engage in it? What kind of work 
what, what kind of craft, what kind of hobby, what kind of art, what kind of skill? Ask yourself that question and own that truth. As we go into the cards, then you can apply them to your life. This is primarily for sun sign, but you may also feel more akin to your moon sign or your rising sign. I always say you can take each of these signs and since they'll all be here in the video, you can look at each one and apply them to wherever in the chart each sign affects your or influences your chart. But mostly this applies to the broad stroke that is your sun sign because it is about direction and overall life purpose. So let's get into it. We start with Scorpio because that's how I shuffled the cards, still starting at Scorpio. And we ask, and I'm going to take this timestamps down as I do this reading so that I know. Actually, before we, before we go into the actual um, readings, let me put in a commercial here. And I'll see you guys in about 30 seconds. All right, we're gonna start with Scorpio, 619. The direction Scorpio needs to go on this new moon. You guys are gonna love this. A new romantic cycle begins. New moon in Libra. This is new moon in your heart space. This is new moon in your... <sighs> balanced space, that you're, you're in balance, new moon in balance. This is potential for new love to come into your life. And clearly this is the direction that you want to go. So Scorpio, you have either been thinking of one, getting out of an old relationship because it's not working and it's held on too long and you need to be done with it and you haven't been done with it. Or two, your new direction is working something out with your current spouse that you would never, never want to get up, give up on. But there needs to be something, there's an imbalance that needs to be worked on. And a happy rebalance is going to be your focus throughout this new moon, but also in the coming year. And last but not least, for those Scorpios who don't yet have a partner, the new one is coming. And I said that around Scorpio season into 2020, there's going to be doors that open up for you guys of new love that you can rely on, that is balanced, that is good, that is a divine counterpart that makes you the best of who you are because it balances out all your aspects. This is real love. Remember that this is a uh, Libra energy, new moon in Libra. Libra is driven by Venus. So Venus is a great counterpart to your old mat house master, which was Mars. Mars, before they discovered Uranus, Mars used to rule Scorpio, Scorpio and Aries. And uh, now it, it is, it is uh, I'm sorry, before they discovered Pluto. Now, of course, Pluto rules a Scorpio, but Mars still has its effect and influence. And when the effects of Venus come in, this is really a divine partnership and a love. So when I ask the cards, what is Scorpio's direction? Scorpio's direction is blatantly and clearly love. New love coming in, a current love being renewed, or an old love dying off so that a new love can come in. But this is a refreshment on love, but also love for yourself. Because a healthy, balanced love always starts with you loving you. Now, why? Why I asked for Scorpio. Why is that your direction? Oh, bam. Boundaries. Boundaries for Scorpio. Where do you need to establish better boundaries? How perfect could these two have fit together? New love and boundaries. This is a new love. Why? Why do you need why is this your direction? Because you know in the past that boundaries have been a huge issue with keeping your love alive and healthy without watching it die in front of you slowly and the passion turning into something that was unhealthy. 
There has got to be a steady, firm set of boundaries. You're being pulled and pushed and grabbed at, too much taken from you, and that's what's causing you to be unhealthy, but a big part of that is you not setting up those boundaries to say, I don't want to give this to you, or enough is enough, or this is too much, or locking somebody out totally and completely because you're afraid to set up those little boundaries um, uh, underneath so that things are actively controlled instead of either one or the other. Either shut somebody out completely so that you don't risk getting hurt or to the other extreme, let them in too far and push you and pull you and mean too much to you. Scorpio, this cycle that's coming up for you, this renewal of love and of healthy love, a new romantic cycle is beginning based on your ability and need to focus on new set of boundaries, a new way to love somebody completely without completely abandoning yourself, a new way of allowing yourself to open up enough to be loved because vulner vulnerability when receiving is also a part of love. It can't just be giving, right? So this, the reason behind this being your direction, new love being your direction is because boundaries were very difficult for you to set up and you've either locked love out, you've either locked love out or you've gotten trapped in it because the boundaries weren't firmly established and they absolutely need to be. This is your new direction because there's a healthy, there's, there's medicine that you need. It's a, it's, it's health. It's for health reasons. You could say this is so you can get right and get better as a person who loves yourself, but also then moving it on and carrying it on to a relationship with somebody else. I have a strong feeling that a lot of you will be closing out relationships with old karmic partners that you've gotten stuck in a karmic partnership that Hey, you still want to you still want to have sex with them all the time, but there doesn't seem to be anything underlying that. Or maybe you're done. Like you don't even really want to feel you don't feel like you really want to be intimate with this person anymore because that you feel so closed out and so detached from them that it's making you miserable. And yet still you won't let go. Well, this is the time. This is the time and momentum starting at this new moon. This is your time to let go to release that old partner, to release that old cycle, even to release the belief that maybe you don't deserve love and it will never happen to you. And to be balanced and in the moment and in the day, knowing that you appreciate and respect yourself enough to maintain those boundaries, as in asking what you need when you need it. Saying no when you really don't want to give it. Saying yes even though you're afraid because you're curious and there's somebody, there's a part of you that wants to, wants to experience, wants the experience. So all of those ways are 3d manifestations of how we set boundaries of being able to speak your mind that isn't driven by emotions that have colored your imagination to the point where you haven't been able to discern what's real and what's not. Being able to say no when it's appropriate, yes when it's appropriate, and not just lay and decide to do one or the other all the time, which causes an imbalance. This is your moment and this is your time. Your focus for this coming year, starting on this new moon in Sagittarius. This coming year, especially with this beautiful momentum that Jupiter is giving the first two weeks of Sagittarius season. And especially with the energy of the new moon where we're inviting things in to receive into our lives. This is your time to ask and manifest for that new romance, that new love. Or if it's your case, the renewed love by setting healthier boundaries. Driven by healthier boundaries. Because as Scorpio, you need to learn healthier boundaries. I'm sorry, hold on one second. All right, we're moving on now to Sagittarius. All right, Sagittarius, let's do this. Sagittarius, the direction you need to move and really focus on moving over this new moon in your sign 
into the next year where you will pick up the most momentum, you'll be able to apply this new moon the best, is surrender to the divine, your higher calling, your higher purpose in life, leveling up in your career or how you communicate with the world, not being content for what's easy or yeah, what comes to you most, most, most um, without resistance, like the path of least resistance. Instead, thinking, what is my purpose and how do I share it? And not having to have somebody else there with you to do it with. I know that you love that feeling of having people around you to energize you, to guide you, to share the experiences with you. But this is really you being your own inner guidance system and making decisions based on what you really want out of life and what is really important to you in life. So Sagittarius, your direction is your higher calling. What is it that you're always focused on? What is it that always brings your brain back to it? What is it that you would do even if you weren't being paid for it? Not the distraction, not the fun, not the fast, not the furious, not even the interesting, the divine, that deep, that deep rooted voice inside of you that is intrigued by a specific thing. You all have it, I know you do, or you wouldn't have been born Sagittarian. What is it that you really love to do? This is your calling for the year ahead. It is a magical year, 2020, where you can get in touch with everything that you are and everything that really matters to you. Making sure that you infuse this divine purpose into every aspect, every choice that you make, into your relationships, into the jobs that you select. Is it aligned? Ask yourself always, is it aligned with your higher purpose? Is it aligned with what matters to you? What's, what's not only in your heart, but it's in your gut, it's in your mind. It's always drawing you back to it. If you find yourself always talking about a specific thing, if you find yourself wanting to be listened to when you speak, be realistic about what that is. Be realistic and say, well, clearly I have a message and clearly I like to share messages and I'm a communicator. Start from there, start from really who you are. These first two weeks of your season where Jupiter is still in its native house of Sagittarius, this is the perfect time for you to ask your ruling planet, which is the planet of luck and fortune and happy outcomes, success. It's a perfect time for you to ask to Jupiter and say, this is what I want. This is where my mind is. This is what I will be manifesting in the coming months, 12 months forward. I will have put energy every single month into working on this goal, which is to align with my highest purpose, my highest self. For some of you, that could mean a complete and total career change. For others, that could mean a complete and total relationship change. For others, it could mean both. And some of you, it doesn't have anything to do with those things. It just has to do with going to church more, studying spirituality, reading books, writing a book, writing a play, creating works of art. There's, there's something inside of you that drives you deeper than anything else. And that's what you have to infuse into everything that you, you choose to do. And the energy starts now. This is when you launch your arrow over this new moon, Sagittarius. It is not when the arrow hits its mark, but it is when you launch that arrow. And the momentum you give it now is the momentum that essentially is going to decide how far you get to take it. So this new moon is giving you that momentum. It's giving you that energy to be able to launch it far so that you can take it far so that it can be strong all throughout next year. It is something that maybe you thought you never were going to be able to do. You never thought you were capable of it, but you absolutely are and you absolutely will. And this new moon energy is directing you to bring it to life. Why? What is the message that you need to hear, Sagittarius, to help you understand why? Why does that have to be my direction? Trust in the Nigel 
What is niggling you feeling? What is that um, um, niggling feeling trying to tell you? As if these cards could not be more perfect. I keep saying it. This is nagging. This is, th they call it niggling and the card, but it's called nagging. What is that nagging, nagging feeling deep inside of you? There's something that's always about you. There's something that's always eating away at you. There's something that's always, like I said, distracting you or making you seem distracted from other things. I'm telling you, Sagittarius, this is already inside of you. You already know what this is. It is that voice and it is that feeling that maybe people have made you feel irresponsible for having, or it's driven you to maybe outwardly act irrational or spontaneous or impulsive or irresponsible by other people's judgments. Deep, when deep down inside, it was something that you always needed and you always wanted and you always know about yourself. You know, this could manifest as in you writing that manifesto or you writing that memoir or you writing that play or you finishing creating that movie. This could manifest in you going and starting up your own company. This could manifest in you coming out of the closet. This is, has, this is, this is what I mean. You already know what I'm talking about because it's been nagging you for years. This is the place that your mind always goes. It may not even be a specific thing, Sagittarius. Just a condition that you always live in all the time. As in, you're always thinking thoughts. You get distracted easily because every time a subject comes up, um, you need to think about it and dissect it and philosophize on it. Well, that needs to tell you who you are and what you need to start making money at so that you can focus on it every day and not be distracted because the truth is, Sagittarius, it's all the other stuff that's distracting you. It's not this. This is what you need to pay attention to. This is what you need to bring, to bring yourself back around to. The reason why you have to surrender to the divine is because you haven't been listening to that voice inside of yourself. You've been dismissing it to fit in with other people's expectations of you. And this year coming forward, you have to cast that arrow out so that it lands where you want it to land. This is a beautiful time, Sagittarius, for you to take aim and really be able to focus so that when you set that arrow loose, you set your arrow loose so it, it lands. When it lands, it lands on the bullseye. Oh. All right, we're going into Capricorn. 22.33, let's mark it and let's do it. Capricorn, the question is the same for you. What direction do you need to head in, starting with this new moon? Step out of your comfort zone, North Node. I just love these cards. Let me tell you why this is so perfect for you, Capricorn. Because where is the North Node right now? The North Node is in Cancer. It is the opposite sign from you. You are the South Node. You could, I just could not have placed this card better. It's basically saying to you, what have you been doing your whole life? What, if, what, is, what has been easy for you your entire life? Okay, now put that aside. Because the problem is you've been doing what is natural to you. Where you need to go is where you're uncomfortable. You need to go into your discomfort zone. And what is that zone for you? Now as Capricorns, it won't be a universal answer because you're all individuals. But this is the call to look to that North Node. North Node is now in Cancer. Like I said, it is your opposite sign. This whole time that the North Node's been in Cancer, you, you, you've probably been struggling. Because the guiding light that is Cancer is, is the motherhood, and you are the fatherhood. Um, you are the rules and the discipline, and Cancer is the nurturing and the patience. And so it doesn't come easy to you to be passive, to sit back, to allow and many opportunities you may have missed because they were looking to come to you and you were jetting by them because you were so focused on 
doing, the active, the aggressive, the masculine energy that is the Capricorn Saturnian energy. It's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful energy. It gets so much done. But what you need to focus on moving forward um, is being more passive. Um, allowing things to come to you and not thinking about them. Not thinking about them until they do. And not thinking about them at all until the time is right and this is the moment. Thinking about nothing but the here and now. Caring for yourself first. Taking care of who you are. Because when, when the North Node is in Cancer, it's telling us self-care. Especially for Cancerians. But... Have you taken care of yourself? Have maybe you been be, been so driven about what everybody else expects of you? You haven't sat back and said, Capricorn, but what do you really want? What is it that really matters to you? It's just ironic that you get this card when the North Node is in the opposite sign. When this whole time has been about you being in a discomfort zone. It's step out of your comfort zone. The North Node is your challenges in life. It's what you're supposed to learn throughout life. And if you focus on the North Node and you focus on those lessons, those lessons, Capricorn, that your North Node can teach you, then your life will be a beautiful one. So what I would do is for each of you out there, Capricorn, listening to this reading right now, do yourself a favor on this Sagittarius new moon, get your natal chart and see where your North node is. Not all Capricorns have a North node in Cancer. Um, cancer is just the opposite sign from Capricorn and the current North node. So in other words, anybody born over the next, I think it's two years, we're in a specific North node, will be their, their North node will be in Cancer and their South node node will be in Capricorn. It's the it's those diametric opposites. So that will be true for anybody born in this particular time. So I would go and look back to your natal chart and I would see, well, what north node, south node combination was I born under? The year that I was born, where was that north node? Because the truth is, that's another generational similarity we have with people that are of our generation or born around the same time as us in that we're all challenged in the same capacity in that same North Node. North Node will sit in a zodiac sign. And by finding out where, where your North Node sits, by what zodiac sign it landed in, study that zodiac sign and its characteristics, what it's good at and what it's bad at. Those will be your challenges. Those, those characteristics of that zodiac sign that your North Node is in, will give you the insight into what you what what are your biggest challenges and what you need to work on the most because if you work on those things the most in your life you're going to get the most out of your life especially being such a karmic driven sign as you if you continue to work in that north node space you will be setting up some exceptional karma for yourself in this life and in the next life so your redirection, your direction moving forward, Capricorn, is for you to look at your North Node, to make sure that you know exactly what it is that makes you most uncomfortable and to start wrapping yourself around those things. If your North Node is in Pisces, then you need to wrap yourself around fantasy. Allow yourself to dream more. Believe in those dreams and follow those dreams regardless. You need to engage in creative activities. Maybe you never would have wanted to. You don't like creative activities. Take a painting class. Engage in theater or, or performance. Really engage. Don't just be an onlooker because an onlooker is still just a judge. Be a participant. That's what I'm talking about. This is your example. So find out. This is your homework, Capricorn. Find out where your north node lives. And then you will know your challenges. And you will know if you work on those challenges and those aspects of life, your life will pick up. That is, your north node is the key. It is the secret that you've been looking for. 
It's the secret that you've been looking for to understand how to make your life better. If you're in a time, and I feel like you are, especially now, when you feel out of control of your life and like you can't do anything to, to make it better, you can always go back to North Node. You can always go back to looking at what the North Node, where that North Node lives. And that's how you, that's how you actively make your life better. Now, what's the reason behind this? The message that you need to understand why, why you need to focus on your North Node, get out of your comfort zone. So that's astrologically speaking. Overall, it's get out of your comfort zone. If your comfort zone is being the boss, take a job on the weekends to understand how it feels to be an employee. If your comfort zone is domesticity, step outside and maybe learn a little bit, start working on an MBA, you know? Get out of what makes you feel safe and comfortable because where you've found that safe space, that comfortable space, is not really doing any good for helping you make progress or make your dreams come true. Don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? I get this from Capricorns so, so much. Always feeling like you have to be somebody other than yourself. Now, I know this seems like it's in direct contrast too, but you just told me to get out of my comfort zone. Isn't that telling me to not be me? No, I'm telling you to be the best of yourself. And the direction that that North Node is pointing is what directs you to be the best of yourself. So get out of, being in our comfort zone isn't us being the best of ourselves, it's being the laziest of ourselves. Even if we work 16 hours a day, work, maybe work is easy for you. If that's what's easy for you, then what you need to learn and set up right now is those vacations you're going to take and those crazy adventures you're going to have because it's second nature for you to work 16 hours a day. It's not sec second nature for you to just relax and be okay with the calm and the stillness and the silence. And that's going to help you be the best of yourself. It's you that are dimming your own shine by maybe saying to yourself, I'm only going to be where I feel most comfortable and I feel most in control. It's sort of a Capricornian pitfall. So what we're going to do is expand ourselves to allow our, our shine to be as bright as it possibly can be. To be on full voltage, is that what it is? Full amp. Full amp shine. And that north node is going to help you. And somehow, Capricorn, you have really not completely and totally come into everything that you are. Everything that you're capable of. Well, now you have the opportunity. On this new moon, you are going to find out where your north node lives. And you're going to come out of your comfort zone and make plans for the year ahead. To make yourself the shiniest, best version of who you are. By applying those parts of yourself that are underworked and underused. You're going to come into your full self, Capricorn, not just your half self. Wow. I had to soak in for a second. That was, that was really, that was challenging stuff. 33, 33, just hit, just hit. But of course it's going to be challenging stuff. When the North node is in the opposite sign, where is the South node? Those are your pitfalls, right? It might have been very easy over the past, past couple of years to fall into those places that are easiest for you, your south node. Now what's your north node? You got to challenge yourself, Capricorn. This is the real challenge, the real challenge. And it's going to make your life, almost reinvent your life, I would say. Okay, we're moving into Aquarius. 34, 13, Aquarius. Let's get into this. So the question is the same for you. Where, which direction do you need to head? Starting with this new moon, where do you need to set your trajectory, Aquarius? Starting on this new moon because it's going to be cast out for the year ahead. And you're going at least six months ahead. And you're going to be absorbing it. This is what you're going to ask for and absorb for the next, as like I said, six months to a year. So 
Which direction do you need to point your target? A win-win outcome is forecast, full moon in Libra. Okay. Finding that person that's right for you, finding that situation that's right for you, finding balance. Balance is really where you need to focus on. There is a sense of hiding, suppressing, walking away from, ignoring. All of those things might have caused a rift, not just in your life, your social life, but in the very person that you are. And so focusing all of your energy and attention on healing that rift, bridging that gap and healing whatever it was that was the initial divide to begin with is absolutely essential. This could have been something that you thought you could leave behind, Aquarius, but you just can't. And now you have to understand why. Why couldn't I leave it behind? What does it mean to me? And how can I find something better in the future? This is learning how to take what you have and make it work for you. To be grateful for what is given in this moment and in these opportunities. There is a bit of sense of this is your time. This is, this is your coming. This is you being in the winner's seat, walking into this next year. Uh, I know we're heading quicker and faster into Aquarius, the age of Aquarius. So this is really you taking the lead and being the momentum that sort of guides everybody. And so the direction that you're going is the direction other people will be following. So where will you be taking people, Aquarius? What's that example that you want to set or that ideally you have to set? Now that's a lot of pressure on you as well. And you guys, I think, feel a tremendous amount of pressure, put a tremendous amount of pressure on yourselves to live up to your own set of ideals. And that could really harm you in a lot of ways when those ideals, sometimes they don't work out right away. We don't have that idyllic situation or, and so disappointment can creep in Aquarius. You need to direct that guiding light always to being balanced this coming year, making sure that inside of you, it not only feels good, but it feels right. It feels healthy. There can be a tendency to get overwhelmed by your sense of idealism. And what this card is saying is you need to aim for balance. That's the most ideal position, isn't it? If you really think about it, Aquarius, the most ideal situation or circumstance is the balanced one. Now, I cannot ignore that this is also a full moon. A Libra full moon, full moon in Libra. Now, Libra is driven by Venus. So Aquarius, this could be coming on a very romantic season for you, right? But in order to, um, this is the full moon though. It's almost like you're ready to give. Be ready to give love, Aquarius. Be ready to shed it, burst with it. Be ready to show it. This could be something that's very difficult for you. You may be a little bit more subdued in terms of showing your love. But Aquarius, this is when you really need to turn on that heart light and let yourself be a hopeless romantic. This coming year, I think you have the ability to start a beautiful relationship, a new love, a love that maybe you've been thinking about on the back burner in the back of your mind somehow, some way for quite some time. Um, and it has a chance to take off, but it's telling me that you're the one that needs to sort of pop it off. You're the one that need, you're the one that holds the energy that it needs to give to somebody else. Um, you're the director, you're the guide. Um, they're going to need your lead, but also no, who is it is all I'm going to ask you. Uh, if you're dealing with a love situation, who is it? Or if you're dealing with a, you know, a long-term relationship, where do you want the relationship to go in the next 15 years? 
This is a question of where do you want this to go and understanding Aquarius that you're the one in the driver's seat and taking, taking that into consideration of not just I'm in control, I decide, but also the tremendous responsibility it is to actually be a good driver because you could hurt other people on the road. You could go in the wrong direction. There's also, a, so that there's a caveat to being in the driver's seat. Yes, your foot is on the gas pedal, your hands are on the wheels, but it takes your mind and your eyes to be focused on the correct road, to be discerning as to what's ahead. And is this a good condition? Do I need to pull over and wait for a while? All of those things about being in the driver's seat is are you responsible enough to be in the driver's seat? That's that other side of that, that sort of caveat, that double-edged sword of being the lead is that you also are the responsible party, the party responsible for, are you taking people in this direction in a healthy way? Are you taking people in this direction that is a healthy direction? Are you being irresponsible? Are you being sloppy? And in doing so, driving too fast, putting their lives in danger to do it. This is a sense, Aquarius, of you stepping into a leadership role that is very prominent, but also taking it very, very seriously. So what I see is a great amount of success and progress being made for you guys next year. And it has to do with taking the lead and being in a leadership role. But drive, it has to do with driving the momentum, being the one that drives the momentum. And it has to start with you having a really clear understanding of who you are, what you real, what's really, really important to you, and, and um, pacing yourself so that you don't overdo it and run out of gas too, too quickly into the journey because you're going to have to go the distance, Aquarius. This is a big, big win, a big win for you and for everybody else because you're the right one for the job. Wow. Now, what is the message behind this direction? Why are you being, being directed to take that kind of position? Anna, grandmother of Jesus, seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. How more perfect could this message be? Aquarius, this is all relating to as above, so below the divine. This is all divinity. I told you this is the age of Aquarius coming. We're dawning. This is the dawning of the age of the Aquari of, of Aquarius. So this is divinely dictated. It's, it's actually got nothing to do with individualism at all. But you're very tapped into and attuned to those higher purposes and that higher calling. Listen. Listen, there is a guide, there is a guardian, there's somebody coming through loud and clear. You won't be out there alone. There, you won't be. This is destiny. So even though you're in the lead in terms of the 3D, you will have a direct guidance system. Somebody always, uh, even if it's just your faith, walking and guiding you and walking there first. This is the message you need to know that this is sort of your divine assignment. It's been planned. This isn't a choice that you can make, Aquarius. People will be watching you. You will have an effect on them. They will take you seriously and appoint you as a leader. And it's meant to be. I can't believe this card came out. This is divine guidance. This is divine mother energy. This is grandmother energy. This is the ancients coming back around. I also think that this is revealing ancient truths through your insights and, and exposing maybe fallacies or, or inconsistencies in what we've accepted to be the truth. You're not redefining the truth, Aquarius. You're delivering it. You're the water bearer. You bear the truth. And that is exactly what your role will be in the next six to 12 months. And you will be gearing up for it starting with this new moon. This is your arrow taking aim. So really on this new moon, get balanced. Spend some time by yourself. Meditate very, very hard and have that target like as the only thing on your mind because you're going to need to hit the mark.
Ooh, that, seeing that card, honestly, Aquarius, it makes me shake. Because it is so much, a, like, the divine grandmother. It's not just a mother, it's ancient wisdom. It's an ancient force or energy. It's been set up for not only millennia, tens of millennia. Like an age, I think an age lasts, what, 10,000 to 30,000 years, to kind of like between there? I mean, here we're going back into an age of Aquarius, which means we haven't seen it for quite some time. There's a lot of truths that you're, that you're going to be a conduit for exposing. This is the energy that is driving the whole globe. Are you ready? This new moon is about asking for the energy and the balance and the healthiness and the stability and the resources to be ready. Ask for it and you shall receive it. I mean, every single one of these is literally like getting deeper as we go. Wow. Pisces. Pisces, 4557. All right, Pisces, same question. Which direction are you headed in, taking off? Which direction is your hair, arrow, arrow heading in in the Sagittarius new moon? Confidence is your key to success. It's all about you, Pisces. It's all about you loving you and filling your own cup. This is a new moon, which means you've been emptied. There has been things in your life that have drained you, sacrificed you, and honestly hurt you. Well, this is you getting that energy back. This is you being open to receive. Which direction are you going? You're going in the direction of your heart, your mind, and soul. You're going in the direction of your self-esteem, of making sure that you are respected by others everywhere you go. Ensuring that by setting up healthy boundaries, um, ensuring that by being sincere and being on your own side and not apologizing for what you feel or what you think, what you want, where you want to be. Pisces, this is you gaining your confidence back. That's where your direction is headed this coming year is that sense of self that may have been emptied that sense of self that may have come into conflict Pisces this is your time to get that back you are working on feeling full again every day of your life and what what fills you up what is that Pisces what is it that makes you feel the best of yourself what is that area that you feel the most accomplished in those are the activities that you want to welcome into your life. In fact, on this new moon, what I would do, Pisces, is I would definitely set up a list of these are the things that are really important to me. This is what I'm welcoming into my life. Do you see? This is the new moon and it wants you on this new moon to focus on you. Focus on what you need really. It's those dark things about yourself that you're hiding. What do you need to heal them? What do you need to help them? What do you need to fill them in? Those are the parts of you that you may have avoided going, but now it's saying, open up. This is the only direction you should be going, is filling these things up, filling yourself up, filling your cup up, allowing yourself to be filled by others, to be provided for by others, to do what it is that you love the absolute most. Now, why is this your direction? Why is it? Why is it? Why? Share your voice. Come out of the cave. Persecution. Expression. Pisces. You have so much to give. And the one thing that you've given is like you've given too much of yourself. But you have so much to give. There's so much in you and the reason why you have to focus on you. Why? Why? Because you have so much to give. Share your voice. Share it loud and share it clear. Write your music. Paint your paintings. Tell your stories. Write your book. Let people hear and see all of you. 
Let them judge as they may, but it's not your concern, Pisces. What your concern is, is to share your voice. Share those understandings that you have deep inside of you. Share those insights. Share about who you are and stick up for who you are. Instead of trying to fit in or be somebody else or be what other people expect of you, who are you authentically? Do you know? Have you lost that person? I think so. I think there's been an emptying of you and now it's time to fill you up, but you're the one that has to fill up yourself. This is also a sense though, Pisces, of people deciding to invest in you, deciding that what you have to offer can be um, good for them too. But watch out for that energy because you don't want to get too dependent upon it. But you do want to look out for people who are taking too much and you want to be around people who will fill you up and will give and will help you and make you feel strongest and give you guidance and make you feel inspired. All of those things are true Pisces and, and the reason is because you need to share your voice. I feel like you're working on a project. You're working on something that's bigger, maybe newer than what you've worked on before. Something, maybe you completed it even this year, but you need to distribute it more. There's an energy behind you that is let people know exactly who you are and commit completely because there's something that you need to say. There's an insight that you have that you need to share. You're going to be doing some sort of performance, I feel, next year. Pisces, that, that I don't think that comes as a surprise to you because you guys are so creative. But some sort of gallery, artwork, demonstration, um, basically coming out, coming out and letting the world know that this is what I have to offer. These are my thoughts. These, this, this is what is important to me. This is my internal world that I'm sharing with you. This is why you're being directed in the direction of confidence is your key to success. Focus on your confidence, Pisces. Know that what you have inside of you is valuable. People are going to want it. In 3D translation, it's going to sell. You're going to make a breakthrough, a major breakthrough, Pisces, in terms of what you've created, your creative project. Believe in it. Have confidence. If it hasn't been received correctly, it's going to be received. This is your big breakthrough year, I think, if you're invested in some side of, sort of creative field. It's a big breakthrough for you. Not looking for happiness in others, happiness through others or because of others but in happiness in what you do and what you're really devoted to. Understanding that what you've denied yourself for so long, you're actually entitled to. And your voice is the bridge between those states of being. Oh, Pisces, you're coming into your own and your voice needs to be heard. But do you believe it? Do you believe in your voice? And do you have enough, enough confidence to share your voice. And that's why the confidence is what you have to be focused on, is knowing with, with knowing completely that you're valuable, you're valued, that your voice needs to be heard. It's your time. That's why, that's the message between, uh, underneath, why you need to direct your arrow, you need to think about self-confidence because you need to get this done. This is your opportunity where people will be listening. You need to finish this project. You need to release this album. You need to audition for that play. You, you need to do it because this is the year where people will be wanting you and receiving you. It will take off from here, Pisces. That's why. That's why. Mm. What a very good year for you. And now we are on to Aries. At 54.04, we're going to Aries. Aries, which direction do you need to take aim in? What do you need to focus on? Which direction do you really need to um, take aim at? On the Sagittarius new moon. And why? What's the purpose behind it? I think that we are really being set up, Aries. I have to put on my, I think you're being really set, where all of us are being set up. 
for what's going to be coming into our lives over the next six months. So where does your focus have to be? Where is the direction that you're looking in? Luck is on your side, new moon in Sagittarius. Oh, this is, this. you have to understand how special this is, Aries. This is the new moon in Sagittarius that we're talking about tomorrow. And it's saying that it's a very lucky time for you. And Jupiter is in Sagittarius, which is a very lucky placement for you. So all I can say is blatantly, Aries, ask and you shall receive. My only caveat, my only warning is be careful what you wish for because it's going to come into your life. And if you've been wishing for that relationship with that karmic partner to work out for years and you're saying, I want them, nobody else, oh, you're going to get them. But you may be stuck with them. So be very careful with what you ask for because Aries, you're going to get it. Where do you need to aim your arrow? Wherever you absolutely want to aim that arrow. Think before you take aim because it's going to be yours. Think where, where you're aiming that Cupid's arrow. Like whose butt are you aiming it at? Because this could be, um, what if you're too prideful, right? What, 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 if, what if you're aiming at something that you should have let go of years ago? So take some time. I want you to know that whatever you welcome into your life, whatever manifestations that you begin tomorrow on the Sagittarius new moon, you're going to get them. You're going to get them. And so maybe don't think of, I want to marry this person. This is just an example. You may not, you may be happily married already, but this is an example. Don't aim your arrow at a specific person. Aim it at love. Don't aim it at a specific uh, lover. Aim it at marriage. Say very clearly, what I want in my life is a beautiful human being that loves me, respects me, drives me, interests me, appeals to me, attracts me, turns me on. I want a wife. I want a husband. And I want to be ready to be a wife and a husband. And so I welcome that into my life. And when you say those things, that's what's going to happen. Wait for it because your arrow will hit the mark. There's no chance that what you ask for tomorrow or welcome in your life will not be yours. It will 100% be yours. And that's why I say take a second and be very careful that you articulate exactly what it is you want. You may think you want a person before you ask for that person to be in your life forever. And I'll tell you a story about why I'm telling you this. Before you ask for that person to be in your life forever, think, what does that person mean to me? As in, what, what, what do they, not mean to me as in how much I love them, but what does my relationship with them really mean? What, where's the happiness? Um, why do I want them so badly? And write those things down. And so you don't, you're not asking for a specific person. You're asking for a specific situation. And then that right person will come to you. You understand? So it's not about, I want this job that I just applied for. Instead, you would say, I want to make over $120,000 a year in my new position where I'm a leader and people have to report to me. So instead of taking aim at a specific job, instead you're taking aim at the criteria of the job that are, that's going to make you happy. And then the right job will come to you. Do you see? We kind of get caught up in sometimes thinking we want something when really we just want the circumstantial accompaniments of what that thing is. You understand? So maybe we don't want a specific man. We want a man with money. And the one you're dating right now has it. And they have a lot. But are they making you happy? So now you would ask for, but I want a wealthy man who makes me happy. I want a wealthy man who doesn't cheat on me every other month. You know, things like that is what you would want to say because be very articulate. That's what this is telling me because Aries, you are going to get what you ask for. You are absolutely, this is, this is it. This is the key. This is the golden freaking ticket. You got in. So whatever it is that you ask for, Aries, you will receive it. So be careful what you ask for. Be careful. Now, let me tell you the little story. 
when I was dating my son's father, first dating him in the first like week or so that we were hanging out, I was very young and very naive and we were hanging out one night in a parking lot, I think behind a, I don't know, in a parking lot we were hanging out and it was a very scenic place, it was really quite lovely and I remember he was the first person that said to me, oh look, 1111, make a wish. And I'd never heard that from anybody before. I, I didn't know what 1111 was. And uh, I was like, oh, oh. He's like, when it hits 1111, you're supposed to make a wish. And I said, okay. And I said silently to myself, I wish that this man will be in my life for the rest of my life. And he is. <laughs> Aries, that's what I'm telling you. Be careful what you wish for because this is energy is saying you're going to get it. You're going to get it. You're going to get exactly what you ask for, right? Like my son's father was somebody who was not supposed to be in my life for the rest of my life. But I wished for it and boy did I get it. He is in my life for the rest of my life because we have a beautiful son together. And no matter what, we always share the experience of being his parents. And that's just it. Now, I don't wish anything would happen to my son so he's not in my life anymore. I'm just saying that when the spiritual world is listening, oh, they are listening. And so you have to be very, very articulate as to what you ask for because you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Now, what's the reasoning behind all of this? Mirror. Who or what is triggering you? Aries. Holding yourself up to a mirror. What is it? Who are you? This is as in the message, the reason behind why you need to take aim very, very articulately is because maybe you haven't been seeing yourself for the whole self. You've been trying to understand yourself as who you want yourself to be. Is who you want to be or who the world you want to convince um, the world of who you are but is that really who you are this is about taking a long hard look in the mirror and being honest with what you see there it's being held up to you this opportunity is being given to you so that you will be introspective over the next couple of days to see really deep inside of yourself who you really are, what you really want out of life, what's really important to you, and be able to really show who you really are. Have you been taking aim in a direction that is not sincerely you? Maybe it's over ambitious, maybe it's overreaching, maybe it's just not sincere. It's it's based on the conditions that were set up for you a long time ago by your parents or by expectations from society. And it's not even what you really want because it's not making you happy, but you feel like you have to hold on to it or you feel like you have to play into it because it's what's expected of you. This is your opportunity to see and manifest exactly what it is that you sincerely want. Please don't make that based on what other people want. Have you been asking for people told you you should want? Um, have you been asking for things that society tells you you should want? Because this is about, look at yourself. You're about to be given the golden ticket, Aries. This is your chance to ask for exactly what you want. Exactly what matters most in your life. Be honest, be articulate, and be oh so sincere, Aries. And I guarantee you, it's going to come to you. I guarantee it. Okay, okay, okay. Aries, we leave you to move on to Taurus. Taurus at 10404. Nice, Taurus. All right, Taurus. Where and what direction should you be aiming in? What direction should you be setting your target and your guidance system in locking in those GPS coordinates? What is that direction? Work through your fears, new moon in Scorpio. Taurus, work through your fears. This could be dealing with something you've gone through in the past, something that you've repressed. 
This could be dealing with your insecurities when it comes to the way the world at large sees you. This could be dealing with a trauma that you've had to suffer through recently. What is it that you're most afraid of? Really, what are you afraid of? Deep down inside, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of being behind? Are you afraid of being left behind? Are you afraid of being ugly? Are you afraid of being rejected? Are you afraid that you'll never fit in? Are you afraid? Why are you afraid of those things? What is it inside of you that is driving you to be so afraid of being everything that you are or being yourself? Are you afraid of being yourself? Are you afraid of being that true person? And if so, why? What is it about yourself and your true person that you don't like that much or that you want to hide? This is the, the, what you need to be aiming for and directing at, directing your arrow, arrow at is to heal those fears, is to first of all, get right with them, admit to them, own them. And then you might start to see an explanation of the choices that you've been making, especially if you're at a position in your life right now when you're not extremely happy. There seems to be a lot ahead of you. Challenges ahead for Taurus based on the struggle that you have with getting right with yourself or be, with, no, 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 being all right with yourself, like loving you first. Not necessarily the others, but the others, not them on the outside coming first, but loving you first. Maybe it's loving yourself too much. Whatever it is that's triggering those fears, whatever it is that you're doing to overcompensate so you don't feel, uh, that you don't feel afraid in your life. This is so important for you to focus on Taurus on the Sagittarius new moon. What is it that you're really, really afraid of? What is it really? Because those fears, the realization of those fears is the key to your success. Opening up those fears and realizing them, owning them, and really letting them sink in and, and not being afraid of them, embracing them, is where your best future lies, your fortune lies. What is it that you really love? What do you really care about? Are you afraid that you'll never achieve it? All of those things are things that you need to be that need to be laid bare and your direction on this Sagittarius new moon is to conquer those fears to face those fears to own those fears to look them in the eye and accept what they are and learn how to do your very best with them that's where your target is because that's what's going to help you the most now why why is that the direction why Mm, this is one of my favorite cards. You feel like a fish out of water, longing for home, mintakan, longing for home, belonging, the original light workers. Why? The reason why is you feel like a fish out of water, like you feel like you've been removed from or taken away from finding people that you belong to. You feel like you can't find your tribe. This is feeling the feeling of being lost, of where do I belong? Where do I really fit in in this world? Where are my people? Maybe you've already found your people, Taurus. Maybe you've already found your purpose in life and you feel like you're obligated to explore far and wide. Who was it that put into your head what their expectations of you were, uh, what their expectations of you are so that you got removed from yourself and what really makes you happy? Have you been fulfilling somebody else's dreams and fantasies? Have you been the conduit for their, um, their success and their dreams coming true? Are you living up to somebody else's expectations instead of your own? What is it that you really want to be? Who is it that you really want to be around? Where do you really, really belong? Do you really love what you're doing? Or, or have you been removed from what you love? and you've been living somebody else's life or dreams. This is you. The message behind this and the momentum behind this energy, Taurus, is simply that you want to go back to where you belong. You want to find where you belong. You feel so lonely and lost right now. Face your fears. Face your fears and understand that sometimes we have to get lost to find ourselves. 
Sometimes going away from home is exactly what we need to find where we really belong. Facing your fears of loneliness and separation and abandonment. When you face those fears, your life is going to open up and blossom. Right now, wherever you are, you feel like a fish out of water. But you're going to find your water and you're going to find that you have wings. So when there is no water, you can also fly. And you would never have found out those things if you hadn't taken yourself out of your comfort zone, Taurus. Fish out of water start to learn the things that they have that are other than their tail and their flippers. You will find your soul tribe and you might find them in the most surprising places. Taurus on this Sagittarius full moon. Open yourself up to the craziness that is around you right now. Open yourself up to these new possibilities. Wherever you feel like you don't belong, try to understand why you feel that way. Understand it and conquer the fear of not belonging. Conquer that fear because I have this feeling like you really are meant to be going through this time of your life. You need to go through this time of your life to actually get to the place where you feel complete and whole again. Wow. Taurus. My little Taurus. Like a fish out of water feeling. I feel like you've just gone, you're going to undergone a lot of major changes in your life this year as well. Because I know you had some really rough times back in the spring um, around your birthday month, let alone. Right? So wherever you've ended up feels almost like in some ways it's a punishment or people have abandoned you or that you're stranded. You're not. Oh, you're not. You've landed in a whole new world, Taurus. Explore it. Take the time. You're going to be very, very happily surprised, but you have to aim at these fears to do it. Face your fears because where you think you don't belong is actually exactly where you're supposed to be. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm loving these messages more and more as they go on. Cancer. Here we start at Cancerian energy. 12, let's do 12, 12, Cancer. Cancer, where do you need to point your compass, to aim your target? Where should you direct your arrow on the Sagittarius new moon? What is your direction of focus? Where do you need to focus your direction? Oh, wow. Ouch. Holy moly. This is big. This is the biggest new moon card that we could have. A new start is coming. Now, um, Aries also got the new moon in Sagittarius, which is targeted, bam, right there, right now, tomorrow. But this is generic new moon. This is every new moon. This is a new start is coming. Your direction, Cancerian, has got to be something brand new. Where you are, the relationship that you're in, you need to let go of this past. You need to let it go and be moving into the future. 100% everything is going to change for you. And I really feel like it's a bunch of good stuff coming in. But your whole focus on the Sagittarius new moon is to welcome in those new opportunities and be open to them. But not only be open to them, Cancer, actually step into them. Step into those new opportunities. Let it be your new skin. Let it be your new shell. Let it be your new life. You're moving. You're moving. You're moving on. You're starting a new business. You're getting into a new relationship. You're taking that chance and you're investing in what you've always loved. Cancerian, this is a 100% hard restart. Your direction is in where, wherever you've aimed your arrows in the past, that's not where you're going to aim, aim them this time. You need to go somewhere new. This is a brand new beginning. Brand new. And oh my God, can I feel in the pit of my stomach, Cancerian, how horrifying it is for you to get out of what is routine and commonplace and to make that move. You have to make that move. There's no other way that I can say it to you. This is one of the most clear statements that I've had all this, throughout this whole reading. Own. 
exactly everything about where you are and acknowledge that it's not where you want to be. You have to completely and totally restart. Cancerian. And I said a similar message to Aries. Whatever you ask for tomorrow, be very, very careful because you're going to get it and you're going to get it in a big, broad way. I feel like you in particular have already been aiming your guidance system. You've already been scoping out what you want to come into your life. You've already been vetting it somehow. You've already been looking for it, looking into it, exploring it. It's going to pop. A hundred percent. Finally, whatever you've been working on is already going to pop. I feel like for you, you've already cast out your arrow. It's already taken off. And maybe, bam, something is going to finally arrive coming on this new moon tomorrow. But definitely use this new moon tomorrow, Cancerians, to reiterate what you've already been put into motion. Because what I really feel is that it's going to take the arrow that's already in flight and push it further. It's going to give it a renewed sense of energy so that it's going to hit that target and hit it hard. And it feels like it's really, really close to hitting that target. You're going to be working on something all next year and it's going to be a success. Ask and you shall receive Cancerian. This is a whole new beginning, a whole new start. Are you ready? Are you ready for all this newness that's coming into your life? I don't honestly think that you can get ready for this because you don't even know how big this is going to be. You have no idea. You have already sent out a couple of arrows of your own and you think they're going to drop. You have no idea what's coming to you. It is completely and totally unexpected. It is completely and totally unwished for. It is completely and totally outside of your imagination, but it is a culmination in other words, all those arrows that you sent off and cast off and everything that you've, you've, everything that you've mentioned and manifested so far this year, energy has been listening. The universe has been listening and it's going to give you back an amalgamation of everything that you sent to it. In other words, it's going to take all the ingredients that you've sent out and hand you back a cake. Something that you didn't even know you wanted. Something that you didn't even ask for. The most delicious thing that's ever been put in your lap. The universe right now is conspiring to put all of the things that you've been working on and focusing together. And to give you something that has a little bit of it in it. So that you didn't have the last ingredient. You couldn't have. It's going to hand it back to you. And that's why it's going to be a surprise to you. You could never have imagined something this amazing happening to you. I'm telling you right now, this is the impossible thing to imagine. And no, I don't think it's a bad change. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's anything bad. I think it's so much new and goodness that you just, you have to just accept it into your life. There's no way that you can even wrap your mind around it right now. So on this new moon tomorrow, you must direct yourself in terms of that new energy. Welcome in the new. Thank the angels. Thank God. Thank whoever you believe in for all the abundance that's being sent into your way. And acknowledge that you, you have no capacity to understand the kind of abundance that's being sent to you. But you receive it with an open heart, an open mind, and an open soul. And you, you exhale and, you, and gratitude. And gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Say thank you for the abundance that's coming your way, Cancerian, because it's all coming in and it's all coming in at once. <sighs> Starseed, what lights you up? And this is the message behind it. This is the message behind it. Why? Why or do you need a new start? What lights you up, Cancerians? You are the star seed. You are a star seed. You were put here for a purpose. You were put here for a reason. You were put here with a purpose, um, something that was divinely placed inside of you before you were born. That's why. It is your purpose and reason in life. That's why you're starting over again. That's why you're leaving this old life behind. That's why you've been thinking of all of these things you've been thinking of all this year. That's why you're manifesting tomorrow because you know your divine purpose. 
It's about to come out. It's about to become everything that you are. Your divine purpose is about to happen. It's about to occur. That's why. That's why everything that you ask for, you're going to be receiving it because it's aligned with the purpose you were put here for. There's a purpose behind it. I, I don't think you can even quite understand it right now completely. You just have inklings and you've been following those inklings. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Remember, I'm a Cancerian too. So give me a second, please. What lights you up? Why have you been keeping yourself from what you love for so long, Cancerian? You love it because it was assigned to you. That love that you feel for it was the indicator that the spirit world gave to you to know what your purpose in life was. Why are you afraid of it? Why have you avoided it? What is your soul purpose? It was put inside of you a long time ago. That's why you obsess over one specific thing. That's why you know you love it so much because you are supposed to do it for that higher purpose. We're dawning on the age of Aquarius, which means we're all aligning with our higher purpose, with the reason why we were put on this planet. The reason why it's been so loud lately is because you're being called to get out there, to contribute. You're, it's your purpose. Why are you ignoring it? It's not about you. It's about the higher calling. It's never been about you. That voice that was put inside of you telling you what you were meant to do was never about you. It was about your role and what your place was in what your purpose was, why you were put on earth. But it, that's for a higher meaning, a higher purpose. And I said it over the summertime, you need to turn your wheel because your wheel is actually just a cog in the bigger picture, but the bigger picture won't turn without you. So you need to turn your wheels it is your divine purpose that you are manifesting. Everything that you have been asking for has been aligned to what you need to do in life for the higher purpose. To get the big wheel moving. Big wheel, keep on turning. Rolling down that river. Cancerians, everything that you manifest, make sure it's 100% aligned with love. What you love. And you know what you love. Make sure that you write down those intentions tomorrow, aligning yourself exactly with what you love. Because not only are you going to get it, you were meant to get it. It's your reason for existing. So get to it. No more fears and no more waiting. It starts tomorrow. Give me a second. <laughs> oh my God. I just, it's almost like whatever was meant for you is coming to you. That's the, that's the overall message, Cancerian. That which was meant for you is on its way to you. It's about to land in your lap. Wow. 12306, we're moving on to Leo. Leo, what is your direction? What direction do you need to take starting tomorrow on this new moon? You need to give up something. Void, of course. It means you need to redirect yourself. Oh, this is a letting go of an expectation. This is a letting go of something that you expected of yourself. A letting go of a momentum. A letting go of something that you almost felt you were entitled to in some way. A letting go of the idea that you're entitled to anything. And that the truth is, letting go is the ultimate freedom. Maybe you've been working too hard. You've been overworking yourself. You've been too focused on work. You've been too focused on achieving your goals. And what your goal really needs to be is to turn around and let go. Let go. Give over, Leo. Give over to the truth. Give over to... The current give over to the flow I think that you've been pushing so hard and you've been insisting on so much for so long but that's burdening you it's hurting you it may be even self-destructing this may be 
that you've expected too much. And you're actually wasting your time in the expectation. What have you chosen your, your current direction for? Is it your soul purpose? Is it your life purpose? Or is it your ego driving you? Ask yourself that question. Because whatever it is, this is a wonderful time to not be connected to it anymore. Now, I'm not saying that if you actually love what you do, you need to give it up. No. If you love what you do, Leo, you need to keep on it. But what is the expectations for what you love? Is it notoriety? Is it money? Those could be the expectations that you need to let go of and just get back to, but why am I doing this and why did I start to begin with? Is it gotten too big? Has it gotten too out of hand? Have, have, um, has what your ego, ego needs to fulfill itself gotten too greedy, gotten too lusty? There is a sense of relinquishing, relinquishment of that kind of power that that thing whatever you're focused on now has over you because it's not working for you there's something about your life that isn't working for you and i think in some level you already feel it and you already know it maybe this is that part of your life purpose that you couldn't figure out why is it just failing over and over again because it's not meant to be. That wasn't meant to be what you do. It wasn't what you're meant for. Whatever it is that you've had your heart set on, it's being denied to you because that's not what you're supposed to have in your life. It's not, it's not really yours is what I'm saying, Leo. It's not really your life purpose. And so letting it go and realizing that you aimed in the wrong direction is so, so important because now all that energy that you've been putting into the wrong direction can be put into the right direction. But you can only be redirected if you're willing. And I do feel like this is going to be very something very, very hard for you to let go of. It's something that you've invested a lot of time, a lot of energy in. It's something that you have taken a lot of pride in and set yourself up for identifying yourself with it. But that's the problem. It's not your identification. It's not who you are. It's actually taking you further away from your first purpose in life. So give it up and let it go. Because you need to. Because you have to. Because your sole purpose is to share your divine light and whatever it is, is dimming your divine light. It's out of reach. What you're trying to take aim at is out of reach. It's out of reach because it's off your course. It's not what you're supposed to be aiming at to begin with. Take a breath. Take a second. And understand how your current target has gotten in your way. Instead of giving you a way forward. What's the message behind this? Why? Why, why, why is your message to redirect? Is your message to understand that what you've been directing your energy on, nothing's going to come of it? Why? Priestess, how are you being called to step up and lead? Whoa. I mean, this is, this is leadership. This is you. How are you being called to step up and lead? I feel like, honestly, you've been directing your energies at the wrong, at the wrong target. You've been asked to lead in a very specific way. And the reason why you're asking to give up the situation is it's distracting you from how you were really meant to lead, how you, your divine purpose on earth. Like, how were you, what were you really put here for? What were you really meant to show? It's not what you're showing right now. It's not what you think it is. It's a different purpose entirely. It may not be a different um, vocation entirely, but what you have set all your time and energy and even money to in the recent months has been getting you off of your divine purpose. You thought it was aligned with your divine purpose and that's why you've been focusing so much of your attention on it. It's not. It's not. This is not what you were put on earth for. 
And that's why you're being told to let it go because the message behind it is it's actually distracting you from all that you're capable of. It's actually distracting you from what you can do, from what you really were meant to do. Your most important reason for existing, what you've been focusing on has been distracting you from it. So please, 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 Leo, stop letting it distract you. Stop chasing this rabbit around the dog track because it's fake, because it's false, because it's not what you're really here for. It's taking you off your divine course not helping you get on it. And so be really, really brutally honest with yourself, Leo. Be brutally honest with yourself and let yourself know. Remind yourself, who are you? Who are you? Really, who are you? Understand that this beautiful Jupiterian energy is redirecting you back to your sense of, of your, your purpose in life. You know, maybe you thought your big purpose in life was to be run the biggest company, make the most money to show the world and inspire somebody that can come up from the bottom and get to the top. And your divine purpose and where your leadership skills really should be used is at home with the kids that you never see. Instead of trying to influence the masses, why don't you influence the people that are most important and that you have the most influence over? Something has been distracting you from really putting the best of yourself to use. So it is that distraction that you need to let go of. Whatever it is that has been taking you off course, don't wish for it anymore. Let go of it. Let go, Leo, let go. Because the truth of the situation is it's been distracting you from, from your highest self, from living up to your fullest potential. It's what you thought was expected of you, not what was really expected of you. You have a divine purpose on this planet. Priestess, how are you being called to step up and lead? Really, how are you being called? Are you doing it? Or have you gotten distracted in people paying attention to you? It's a good question, Leo. And it's one that you need to ask yourself. I think it's very, very important this message is coming through. Have you really been leading or have you just been starring in your own sitcom? Have you just been loving the cameras being on you and the lights and the makeup and the costumes? You've gotten distracted by all the superfluous stuff and you've somehow in some way forgotten what was really your, your life purpose. It's gotten too big and it wasn't supposed to be this big. It's not about the shine. It's about the truth. Oh, that is a powerful, powerful message. Let's go on to Leo that you have a lot to think about there. And I think it's particularly challenging for you because your ego is such an important thing for you. Your public persona is such an important thing for you that it's like, well, what am I supposed to do now? It is, what are you talking about? I'm not supposed to get this attention. It's not supposed to be about attention. It's about leadership. Leadership isn't about attention. The best leaders lead from behind and they ask nothing. They lead by example. Have you been doing that or have you been putting on a show? And that's the question that I'm gonna leave, leave you with. Virgo, coming upon 133.11. Virgo, where should you be directing your energy? Where are you aiming your compass and pointing your compass? Where are you directing your energy starting at the Sagittarius new moon? But whatever you manifest on this new moon, Virgo is going to come to you, could come to you six months out, could come to you a year later. So which direction are you taking aim at? Where do you need to direct your energies? The energy is gaining momentum. What's the potential in your life, Virgo? What's this new opportunity that's come to you? It's a new opportunity. It's taking lead. It's taking momentum. It's growing. You're a little bit hesitant. I remember getting this card for you uh, maybe a month ago and sometime in Libra season. I remember this energy of being hesitant to accept that it's actually happening and it's actually occurring. You know what? You can take your time with it, Virgo, but you've got to accept it. 
Something is gaining, gaining momentum. What is gaining momentum? What is this new opportunity ahead? I almost feel like you're a little bit afraid. You don't want to get too cocky. Maybe for good reason. Maybe you know yourself better than I do. Okay, and that's why, look, look at this beautiful card. It's portioning it out. It's separating things. It's taking things, what? One step at a time. So that it doesn't overwhelm you or overcome you. That's not what you want because the abundance is rolling in Virgo. You need to point your, yourself in the direction that you really like, which is to break things up into little increments and figure out what each new step is going to be. Yes, your focus is on your bright future, but in particular, it's on the steps that you're going to take to get there. And that's where you need to put your brain space and it's perfect brain space for you. It's on the steps. It's on each individual step. It will calm you down. It will help you be open and receptive to what comes into you. You are not focused on the big picture. You're focused on each individual step that's taking you closer to the big picture. That when you aim your arrow in that direction, when you focus on each step, as opposed to the big picture, it's going to make the big picture so much more accessible to you, Virgo. And that's what you're being called to do on the Sagittarius full moon, is direct yourself at just the next step. And, but, and do this because this is perfect for you. Schedule. Okay, I'm only going to look at the next step. But how long am I going to allow myself to stay there? Two weeks? Okay. Then I'm going to look at the next step. Put it on your calendars, Virgo. Plan it and plot it. The universe is calling you to aim your arrow step by step. Your arrow is a very special arrow. It's going to hop along instead of just whoosh, fly, because you don't feel comfortable with that and that's okay. So what is your next step, Virgo? I feel like if you aimed directly for the moon, you would you wouldn't you wouldn't like you wouldn't like the view. You need to aim for the next step, but also plan it out, plot it out. What's the step after that? What's the step after that? It's almost like your moon is going through those freeze frames. I'm not your new moon, your arrow is going through those freeze frames. Like ch -ch 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 -ch, because it's what you need and it's more than okay to accommodate you. Your, your big picture is coming and your abundance is most assuredly rolling in, but it's a little too much for you to handle all at once. So you don't have to. Please handle it in increments. It's coming. It's gaining momentum. What is this opportunity? Listen, aim, aim your arrow at that opportunity, but not at the whole opportunity, at the next step to that opportunity. Okay? One step at a time. So it never becomes too much for you. This is a beautiful energy for you, Virgo. Of all the signs, it's, it's like it's just so perfect for you. You keep gaining that momentum. It's almost like you don't want to admit to yourself what's important to you right now. Or you don't want to admit to yourself what you really want. You don't want to look too far ahead. Don't. It's just fine. Because the ahead is coming to you. Don't deny it. I think that's the one caveat is don't deny that it's happening. Don't try to avoid it or hide from it. Just take it one step at a time because that's how you can digest it. Now, why are you, why are you directing yourself in this direction? Why? What's the message behind it? Pleiades. That's a powerful card. Double mission. Channeling and uplifting humanity. Oh, Virgo, the reason why you're being given the beautiful gift of being able to take things one step at a time is because your divine purpose is to be able to guide people through those steps. Ooh, that hit me hard. Wow. Your divine purpose is to be able to go back and lead people. If you don't take your time step by step to know each of the steps, to define each of the steps, to clarify each of the steps, 
then you'll never be able to go back and lead others through each of the steps. You have to become the master of this journey. You, like a Sherpa leading people up to Mount Everest, it has to be second nature to you. And that's why little by little, you're taking this energy in increments, not to slow it down, to study it, to research it, to understand it enough that you can feed it back to everybody else. You can teach it. You can describe it. You can turn it around and around in your hands. It's what you're being asked to do, not to be stuck on one step, but to be able to show people each of the expectations, the qualifications for each step so you can move on to the next. This is the energy of a teacher. The purpose behind your like stop frame, um, your freeze frame momentum is so that you can study very closely so that you will be able to describe and you'll be able to share and you'll be able to lead others through that war zone. You know, you're st it's almost like, I just saw the image of Princess Diana in my head where she was, you know, walking through the, um, what was it, a famous image? She was walking through the um, landmines, right? And she was walking through a specific path that they thought was going to be okay, but she still had to wear that protective gear on her just in case. That's what you're doing. Virgo, your purpose, your direction is through the landmines because you're the perfect per. Not to say that your life is bad. No, it's leading to beautiful. But... It's not that bad stuff is going to happen and landmines are going to explode. The thing is, you have to, you're walking as if you were walking through a landmine zone so that you can be sure that every step you took is a step that the next person behind you can rely on. You're mapping it out for people. You're the cartographer here. You're mapping out, you're the GPS system. You're the one that's going to be able to lead people through the craziness. And that's why all that fortune, step by step, you want to be able to understand it so that then you can guide people through it. So that you understand every nuance and every aspect and every shadow, every stone has been turned over because you need to know why that stone is there, what its purpose is, and what it means on this path. Oh, Virgo, there's no better energy for you. This is you really aligning with your life purpose by that beautiful happy ending, it's coming to you. But you're aiming by increments so that you can help people understand, how do I accept my abundance? How do I welcome it in? How do I even feel comfortable doing this? Well, Virgo, you're the perfect one to map it out for them. Beautiful. Life purpose, soul purpose. As we go, I've said this before, if you guys have been watching the whole video. As we go closer to the age of Aquarius, we're being aligned with our higher purpose. Your purpose, Virgo, is to be the guide. To be the guide through the rough times. You won't be in rough times, but you'll be the one to help other people through them. And you'll know because you've taken the time on each step exactly what to teach people to help them attain their highest self. Oh my God. Oh wow. I just, uh, yeah, no, I mean, listen, I, it, it almost takes the breath out of me. I, it, I just get surprised. Each of these messages just keeps getting better and better. Libra, we're at 133.39. Libra, Libra energy, Libra energy. We're at 143.39. Libra energy. What is the Libra energy coming toward us? The Libra energy, um, excuse me. Libra, what is your direction? What direction do you need to aim yourself in? On the Sagittarius new moon what opportunities are you launching come this new moon and then we're gonna ask the question why what's the purpose behind it what you need to know to understand why you're being directed that way let's start with the direction Libra 
Conclusions are within reach. Full moon eclipse. Letting go. You're directing your energy to let go of something just like Leo was. But this is you having to understand you're aiming your energy or what you're welcoming in is answers to questions that you didn't understand, to things that were a mystery to you, to things that have been kept from you, things that were not clear, things that needed to be clarified, information that you needed to be able to make your life, put your life back in harmony and back in balance. There's been something Libra that has been kept from you. There has been something that has been stalled. There's been a, a, something hanging over your head that you've wanted to release and wanted to let go. But gosh almighty, it's just not happening. There has been messages that you have not received. Stuff that has been blocked from you. And now the momentum is flowing. Now the flow is in reach. So Libra, aim your arrow at those answers, those questions. Ask the questions again if you have to. This is a great time for you to go back and once again demand on those answers or, you know, reapply or help yourself somehow understand, to help yourself somehow understand um, what was kept from you. There's something that was kept from you, Libra. What an, an enigmatic card. And I think that that's what it is. Unanswered questions. Things that you don't understand. Why did they happen? What was the purpose behind why they happened? This is the time for you to ask again. Why didn't I get the job? Why didn't I hear from you again? Why didn't it work out? Why did you make that choice when you knew it was going to hurt me? Those questions... That, that were sort of hanging above you and you've been trying to resolve or find a way to just balance out if you were never going to get the answers to the questions, those answers are coming in now. Those answers are going to come into you. Libra, you're finally going to be able to understand why you were denied something, why you were rejected, why something didn't work out, or you're finally going to be able to re release those things that weren't that weren't working out and you're going to have the words to be able to explain why they have to end and why you're leaving. Um, this is a release. It's a sense of letting go, a sense of being able to not say goodbye, but say hello to a new future because you finally relinquished the past. There is a sense of, because this is why, this is why I have to move on from here. Being able to finally have found the words to understand or be brave enough to accept why you're ending something, why you're leaving that job, why you're leaving that partnership, why you're leaving your husband, why you're leaving that wife, your wife, um, why good things have happened to you. Understand they were a mystery to you. Maybe why you were nominated for something or why you got a, 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 an award or if you just received money recently and you didn't understand why. Those answers are coming to you. Whatever answer has been hanging above your head, sorry, whatever question has been hanging above your head and the answers have eluded you, Libra, the answers are coming in now. You're going to finally be able to understand everything that was going on beneath the surface. Those answers are going to come to you. Now, what does it mean for your direction? It could very well be that you're delivering the answers. That you're making things clear for people. You're helping people to understand what has been happening and why it's been happening. Okay? It could also mean that you're the one drawing the conclusion. So you're the one leaving. You're the one that's ending something. You're the one that's making a decision to stop things. Um, um, you would be the driving force behind this momentum. So where you need to take your aim, where you're being directed, or where you need to direct your focus is what I should say, is at those unanswered questions or those unresolved issues because they need to be done. The energy is here, right here, right now, Libra, for them to all be resolved. 
you need the resolution. Um, yeah, you need the resolution. Conclusions are within reach. There's just something that's happened to you that's been really disappointing. Something that has remained a mystery to you and you did not understand. Take a stab at it again. Take a stab at those mysteries again. You're going to figure it out. You're going to find out and the answers are finally going to come to you. Now, why? Why is this your energy? Why should this be where your focus is? Oh, this is so beautiful, Libra. Dance with life. Do something to change your energy. You've been stuck. You've been stuck in a situation that was draining you. You've been stuck in a circumstance or a situation, relationship, job that just wasn't who you are. It was, it was, it was keeping you away from your full self. It was keeping you away from being happy. You weren't, you weren't in the right circumstance or the situation. And that's why your aim is to end things, to let them conclude, to allow this to be the finish. I open at close. Remember that line from Harry Potter? I open at close. Well, this is your close. Your focus has got to be on letting go, giving up, releasing this new moon. Why? Because your life has been diminished because of it. Your energies have got to be focused on just being in the present moment without any expectations being levied on your shoulders. You just want to release whatever it is inside of you into the world. Maybe that's the problem. The real you has been blocked up. You haven't been able to let it out. So this letting go is actually letting go of your chains. It's letting go of your restrictions. Those thoughts in your brain that tell you you can't do it. That's also a letting go. It's not just a relationship. Though if you've been in a confining relationship, this is it. This is done. This is when you announce you're leaving. If this is it, I'm just letting you know that. But look at how beautiful this card is. Do something to change your energy. You become very out of balance, Libra. Dancers are extremely balanced. There's a sense of you need to get back into balance. And I think what's unbalanced you is trying to be the balance for everybody else. I've said this to you. I said it to you, I think, a couple readings ago. Um... You have focused your energy on helping so many other people or, or basically making the situation right by giving too much of yourself and you've fallen out of balance. Libra, the world wants you to dance again. It wants to see you back up on your toes. It needs to see it's Libra's dancing again. And you've, you've given up on it. You forgot about your dance in order to infuse everybody else with what they need. And that's the issue, isn't it? And it's got to stop. The reason behind you letting go is to get yourself back into balance. And so on this new moon, that's where your focus is. That's where you're pointing your arrow at an ending, at a conclusion, at being done, at finally giving over, giving up. Whatever you have been telling yourself, to harm yourself into still making the wrong choice, now it's time to be done. Give up. Let go. Hand it over. You just have to do it, Libra. Aim directly at your conclusion over the next couple of days. You'll get the answers that you need. You'll get the energy back into balance, which is what you want. And I also feel like things will be very coming, becoming clear to you. Suddenly, maybe if you had doubts, you kept making excuses to yourself, Libra. This is the energy of just constantly making excuses to yourself, holding on to something for all the best sounding reasons. No more. No more holding on. You just realize that you don't need to hold on. The person in your life that you were holding on to doesn't need you as much as you, as much as you convinced yourself they did. If they're okay and they're doing well, maybe that's what it is. You wanted to be sure that the other side of things was going to be able to do well without you. And now I think you finally see that they can and they do. 
And so now you can put your world back into balance. By prioritizing your balance, getting the answers that you need, saying what you need to say, and letting go of, ooh, aim that arrow directly at letting go. You need to. This energy needs to pop, Libra. And I think information is coming in. You, you needed to be sure. And whatever messages you were waiting for, whatever data or statistics you were waiting for, whatever the information it was that you were waiting for, it's, going, it's coming in. It's coming in and it's going to help you take aim at the ending that you need. You're directing your energy toward an ending, toward closing things out to rebalance your own life. And that's a beautiful energy to be renewed. Beautiful, especially going into a new year. Oh, I mean, this has been almost two hours online with you guys, and we have uncovered beautiful energy. This is a tremendous new moon. Go back and watch it as often as you want. Watch others if you need to. I have loved spending this time with you. I will continue to make, I think, maybe not just, I was going to say provocative, but important educational and inspirational hopefully videos like this more and more and more thank you so much you guys for sharing this time with me i love you and i'll see you soon oh once again just to just to do some work if you need a personal reading that it's um all the information for that is in, in the description box below you can just email me at bornwithoutboundaries at gmail.com we can get that ball rolling if you're looking for the Daily Tarot, the Daily Tarot is now taking place on Instagram. We're building the dare, I'm building, building the Daily Tarot over there now so that I have extra room and space to upload new things like this, um, which I would not have been able to do before. So there's a lot of purpose behind the changes that are coming and it's all good stuff. So I'll see you soon. Bye guys.